Okay, so now the next thing we need to look at is what happens when you don't have uh, zero slope. And that's what these represent right here. These all are graphs in which we have a distinct maximum here, a distinct minimum here, uh, in which case we take the slope of, at these particular points and we find that they're not differentiable. If you get a vertical line, which means that it's an infinity slope. And so that's true for both of these, and therefore um, this point here is the critical point, and this point right here is the critical point. Over here, we're having what we call an inflection point, where the slope of the tangent at this particular point where it's going from this direction to this direction is also at infinity or a vertical line. Same thing with this right here, which just looks like the inverse of this right here. Not differentiable means that it's going to have a critical point at that particular value of x or c or whatever it is you're calling. So let's take a look at how we can calculate this. We're going to determine some critical numbers. Now, well, in your textbook, I'm going to take a look at number 13. This is on page um, two, or 169, I believe. Yes, 169. And so this is uh, the function of x is equal to x squared times x minus 3. And so what we want to do we want to find the derivative at the point where it's uh, going to be zero for a critical point. So I'm going to rewrite this to be x cubed minus 3x squared. It's a lot more easily uh, differentiated that way. So f prime of x is equal to 3x squared minus 6x. And since I want to say from zero to determine a critical point, then um, this, I'm going to factor out a 3x here, and then it's going to be x minus 2 in the parentheses equals 0. Since, since this expression equals 0, that means then that 3x equals 0 and x minus 2 equals 0. Well, in this case, x is going to be equal to 0, and x is equal to positive 2. So the two critical numbers are coming out to be there, 0 and 2. Okay, not too bad. Little factor involved. That's pretty easy factoring, in fact. So let's take a look at number 15. Number 15, we have g of t is equal to t times the square root of 4 minus t. Now again, I'm going to rewrite this to get rid of that radical. Uh, it's going to be t times 4 minus t to the 1 half power. Okay, so now I'm going to find the derivative of that. And this is going to be, I'm going to take uh, t times the derivative of that. So I'll take the 1 half down. This is going to subtract 1 from the 1 half. So the 4 minus 2 stays in fact there. And that becomes a negative 1 half. And then I take the derivative inside this u, if you will. And the 4 is a 0, so that drops out. And the uh, derivative of negative t is just plain negative 1. Now, I take that, and then I take 4 minus t to 1 half times the derivative of t, which is 1. So I'm going to get this ugly spud to be somewhat redeemable and, and works here. So the 2 is going to be the denominator. The negative 1 half means that the 4 minus t is going to be in the denominator. And the t is going to stay on top. And we've got a negative sign here, so that makes that a negative t. Plus, now, uh, I recognize right away here that I got four, uh, the same value inside the radical here. So I think I'm going to be able to combine something here to make this, again, more palatable. 
So I'll do, I'm going to make this 4 minus t to the 1 half power over 1. And the reason why I'm doing that is because I recognize I'm going to be able to make the lowest common denominator thing here where it's going to get rid of this ugly radical of the numerator. You have to do this. It depends upon who your professor is when you take this in college. I, I think it's not a bad idea anytime you have an opportunity to get rid of it to do this, particularly to sharpen your mathematical manipulative skills. So the lowest common denominator will be this 2 times 4 minus t to the 1 half power. Now this already is that down here, so this goes to that one time, so it's negative t times 1. Plus, now 1 goes into this, this entire expression here, and this entire expression is going to multiply this. So that's going to be t, or 2 rather, times 4 minus t to the 1 half times 4 minus t to the 1 half power. Okay? Well, first of all, we recognize that negative t times 1 is negative t. Plus 2 times now. The nice thing about this is you've got the square root of the same thing multiplying, which by definition will give you what's inside the parentheses. Or you can think of the fact that you're multiplying the same base by the exponents. You add the exponents of 1 half plus 1 half is 1. So 2 times 4 minus t over 2 times 4 minus t to the 1 half power. Well, again, you can distribute this thing right here. 2 times 4 is 8, minus, and then this becomes 2t. And now we got um, t's that can be combined here. And I've got an 8 here in front, so 8 minus negative 1 and negative 2t is negative 3t over 2 times 4 minus t to the 1 half power. I know some of you are going to be a little itchy to get to cancel the 2 and 8 that you see there, but you can't if there's not a number divided by 2 here as well, because these are subtracting, not multiplying, then you can't cancel 2 just from the 8. If that had a time sign, you could do that, not in this case. Okay, so now what we're going to do is, and, oh yeah, the other little kicker here is t has to be less than 3. Okay, now I'll, and I'll explain why, but basically what they're saying is that this is a, this is a limited interval. Uh, it looks like it's going to be an open interval because of that right there. Um, but the reason why they're doing that because if you have t is equal to 4, this is going to make this have one of those vertical asymptotes or vertical slopes that will make it uh, a critical number at that particular point. But for some reason, they're not looking for that because they're trying to avoid that. So we're just looking at the interval not up to 3. So that means we just set the uh, 8 minus 3t equal to 0. And when you solve this, the t is equal to 8 thirds, which is less than 3. So that is your critical number. Last problem we'll do, number 17, is h of x equals sine squared x plus cosine x. And for this, they want x to be somewhere between 0 and 2 pi, or 360 degrees. Okay? Well, this is a pretty easy one to derive. So h prime of x. Um, you start with this. We have this is sine x prime squared. So the 2 goes in front. Uh, and that's going to leave sine x left over because you subtract 1 from the 2. And the reason why I'm doing this is because you got to remember that this, like this, is another way of putting it like that. Those two are the same thing. Okay? Plus, our time, rather, now, we got to take the derivative of the, uh, the uh, sine of x 
which is the cosine of this. That's what's inside the graph. Probably should have rewritten this so that's a little more clear. So I'll, I'll do it right in the middle. Sine x on the square plus the cosine x. Maybe that's a lot more easy to see what's going on here. So the two rules are right there, and then that expect we're going to do that, and then you take the derivative of what's inside of that, and after that comes right here. Now, we take the derivative of the cosine of x, which is minus sine of x. And we can, do, we can um, simplify this to, by factoring it out. If we want factors to set equal to zero for this, we take the sine of x out, so sine of x times, and this expression, take the sine of x out, that leaves you 2 cosine x. Take the sine of x out of that, and leaves you negative 1. And we're going to set that equal to zero. So sine of x equals zero. And since we can't have x be equal to zero, because of that kicker there, we can't have x equal to zero. But we do know that at 180 degrees or pi radians, that x sine of x is zero. So x is equal to pi. Over here, 2 cosine x minus 1 equals 0. We have 1, this is 2 cosine x equals 1. And that means the cosine of x equals positive 1 half. Now, this is where you need to keep in mind that the cosine is positive in the first and fourth quadrants. We also know, or should know, if you don't know, you probably should uh, um, get it out. In fact, I think I will make this available to you, uh, the little chart with uh, sine, cosine, tangent of, of the 90 degrees, and then the, every student takes Campbell chart about the uh, signs. So, but keeping that in mind, uh, if 60 degrees, cosine 60 degrees is 1 half, 60 degrees is pi over 3, so x equals pi over 3. Now we can't have a second quadrant part of that because cosine is negative in the second quadrant. Cosine is negative in the third quadrant. But the cosine of x is positive in the fourth quadrant. But because the x-axis is over here, so this is what we got going on here. This is pi over 3 radians right here. This is where we got that from. This has to be pi over 3 radians over here in the fourth quadrant, but it's going away from uh, the uh, 2 pi. So we're going to take 2 pi minus pi over 3, or 360 degrees, subtracting 60, and then changing it back into uh, radian 4. Either way, you should get 5 pi over 3. OK? All right. So, our answers here for critical numbers, and we put them in order, pi over 3, pi, and 5 pi over 3. Okay? All right, so a little ma ma uh, mathematical manipulation shouldn't be too bad. Uh, practice, practice, practice always helps, particularly before you go up to the next step, next level. So your assignment for this is being 169. 14 through 18. 